episode of the world's strictest parents what is the plan for today chores work meet the calls hustle hustle a large utah family <laughs> these are only five of our kids we actually have 12. that depends on everyone pitching in you didn't finish mowing either and working hard you need to hustle both in and out of the home as soon as you get done doing that we have some toilets to scrub for the next week they'll take in two entitled teens hey, are you not done yet well i'm trying you don't take anything seriously you're in my personal space but can high expectations okay this isn't working don't gripe don't complain and harsh consequences but if anything gets really nasty then i take care of it force these teens to change you're not my parent neither one of you have a problem with cursing do you yeah <laughs> I'm Ariel, I'm 16, and I'm from Peachtree City, Georgia. I'm a princess because I get whatever I want. Hey, are you not done yet? Well, I'm trying. I try to compensate for Ariel's father's absence, and she always gets what she wants. This ring is like $5,000. She got a car for her sweet 16. I've gotten two speeding tickets, along with a dent in the side of my car. Don't even right now. I'm just saying. OK, well, I don't care. Shut up. Everything about my mom pisses me off. Okay, well, you don't know, so shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. When she does piss me off, then it's all hell breaks loose. You're a liar. Don't raise your voice at me. I feel like I've just, like, blown too much, like, to, like, try to straighten up now. I would prefer if you put on some emotional. Well, I don't care. I do not think Ariel respects me. I don't think Ariel respects anybody. Nope, 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 nope. I'm Mark Eisler, I'm 16, and I'm from O'Fallon, Missouri. I don't really have a motto, I leave those to simple-minded douchebags. Mark is very lazy. Generally, I come home from work to find him on the couch. There's a basket of laundry over there that needs to be folded. You're in my personal space. I don't feel like I need to clean because I'll just have mom and dad do that for me. Your English 2 teacher called me again. I shouldn't have to take these phone calls from your teachers and your principals every day while I'm trying to do my job. Mark currently should be a junior in high school. Unfortunately, he flunked all last year and was suspended out of school. He needs to get his act together at school. He's been disrespectful to teachers, which is unacceptable. You don't take anything seriously. That's the problem. I think everything in life's a joke. I know, I know. You think it's going to be a joke when you're living on the street? <laughs> yes, that's, that's not going to be funny. That's going to be pure comedy gold. My biggest fear for Mark is that he doesn't care about anything right now. He's not going to make nothing of himself, and he's going to be struggling through life. What I hope he gets out of this experience is that he can't screw around all the time, and the hard work will pay off in the long run. The thing that would make me most happy is if Mark comes home from this experience and starts being more respectful. The parents are going to be living in hell for the next week with me. I hope that Ariel will come back and just be a kinder person. My advice to new family is you really don't want to piss me off. I'm Russell Call. This is my wife, Kimberly. We have 12 children. Currently living at home, we have five children. Garrison, Cameron, Layton, Simony, and Bryn. And we live in Moab, Utah. In our house, mom is the strict one. Did you do the piano? Which one? Both of them? You need to hustle. Dad is waiting on you. And most of the time, I'm joking around, having a good time. But they know that when I get serious, it's really serious. Seminary, are you done with your room? We got to hustle. We got a late start. Running a household with this many people in it is a monumental task. OK, would you go preheat the oven? Okay. What is the plan for today? Chores, work. <laughs> we do have a business where we get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Hustle, hustle. We go and clean and maintain buildings. OK, let's go. After doing it so many years, it just comes normal. It's a time that I get to know my children. I get to be with them. I get to work with them. Let's get on to the next building. They understand that if this business fails, we can't eat. Pray these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We believe that there is a reason why we're here upon this earth. We have to not squander our time. You guys, we need to have a family council really quick just to kind of plan out the day. We like to have family councils quite often. If someone does this, 
what should happen to them. You didn't finish mowing either, did you? They could do that. I would advise the teens not to uh, get on my parents' bad side and just do what they uh, need the first time I asked. It'd be a lot more fun for them. Shoes on the carpet, take them off. My parents are strict. Once so many of us Like, really strict. Brandon, you're gonna have to get some different pants on. You can't wear those. If these teenagers are so disruptive that our family just is not able to function like they usually do and they don't have the happy feeling we have here, it would be very difficult for me. Hey. Hi. What's your name? Uh, I'm Ariel. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ready to go f with some parents? <laughs> yeah. When I first saw Mark, I was like, this kid's going to be fun to live with for a week. There's like nothing here. I feel like I'm in like the Wild West or something. <laughs> People out here are very religious. That's all I know about this place. They're kind to Heavenly Father. We suppose that we won't have any harm or danger come over us this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We gotta team up to f them over. <laughs> That's the house. As we pulled up to the house, I was like, what is this? It looks like it was made out of straw and dog <laughs> We get a seal. Yes, we do. <laughs> There's a million kids. Mormons. Mormons. When I pulled into the driveway, I saw them with their fake little smiles and pretending to be all happy to see us. Of course, I didn't really buy it. Holy Hey. <laughs> Mark Eisler, what's up? <laughs> hey. What's up? Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. Hi. Oh, I don't think so. Hi. Hi. How are you? Well, these are only five of our kids. We actually have 12. What? Like 12 kids. What the f Come on in. Most of the uh, expectations we have are pretty easy. In our home, my wife is the most special person in the world to me. She's basically someone that you respect with every bit of respect you can possibly muster. When Russ said that about Kim, you could just tell it like she's in charge. OK, the first thing that we expect of our children, just obey mom and dad, and things work out really, really good. All right, here's another one that my boys hate and my husband hates, but I insist on. You have to sit to use the toilet. All right, no, ah. that's... <laughs> I thought that was a little far, because I'm not going to sit down the toilet like a little If there's any piddle on the toilet, I will know it's you. And you will be cleaning toilets for a long time, all right? Um, that's a risk I'm going to have to take. We don't say stupid in this house. That's stupid. Obviously, Mark was going to um, see what kind of reaction he could get. Neither one of you have a problem with cursing, do you? Yeah. <sighs> Initially, I had the uh, desire to get upset, but I did not want to give Mark the satisfaction of thinking, oh, I found another button to push. Now, that one, uh-uh. That won't happen here. This is a kid who has never been restrained or taught self-restraint. He wants attention. It was very obvious right off the bat. It was going to be a lot of work. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. You understand? OK. So it's pretty clear. I think the new rules are stupid. I think the dad's stupid. I think this house is stupid. Got to use the bathroom. Mark went up to the restroom. I was concerned because I thought he might be hiding something in his pockets. I went up to the restroom actually looking for something he had hidden. I was shocked and appalled, as most parents would be, to see that some 16-year-old boy had urinated all over the top of the toilet. Hey, Kimberly, go ahead and look at the toilet seat. Oh, 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 oh. Wouldn't that be fun to sit on? <sighs> OK. You know, I thought, OK, here, it starts right now. Mark. If you do this again, you will be doing this for five days. Do you understand? All right. Do you understand? I clearly understand. Good. I don't want to see Piddle on the toilet again, especially if you've done it on purpose. OK? All right. I think the reason why I'm testing the waters with these parents is because they thought that I was going to come in here, you know, come in, come out, change and stuff. But I'm going to give them a little run for their money. 
And Mark. Okay. Mark. As uh, we were preparing the dinner and I sat down with Mark, I uh, got a little bit of a problem. When we invite you here, we act as nice as we can to everybody. We like them to feel at home. We want them to feel comfortable here. For the most part, I'm a pretty nice guy. I was voted the friendliest in my high school. You know, I have the senior favorites and things. Mm -hmm. But I also had a nickname, and it was Killer. Because when I get upset, I get really upset. I'm just, this is your last warning. You don't drop any foul language. You don't talk about body parts. I don't want you peeing on the toilet again. And if you ever use a foul word in front of my wife again, I will get very angry. And I think I broke through his facade of intelligence and humor, and it scared him. If we have to get down and dirty, I'm not a fun person to be around. After having a talk with him, he looked really serious, and I guess it taught me to, you know, watch my language around her. Coming up. Would you mind washing dishes? Ariel is forced back to basics. Seriously, never washed them by hand? No. And. Mark! Are the rules too much for Mark? I need to get away from those people. You need to wake up, all right? You can come on down if you want. As we gathered our family together for scriptures and prayers, Mark and Ariel seemed a bit befuddled by what we were doing. <clears throat> Today is kind of a special day. It's Sunday, it's the Sabbath. We're going to read one chapter out of the scriptures this morning, and then we'll have prayers. Scripture study is important to us because it's kind of like putting on your armor for the day. And now it came to pass that after Benedict I had spoken these words, he stretched forth his hand and said, the time shall come when all I just thought to myself, this is so stupid. and It's a waste of time. But remember that he pers persists in his own carnal nature and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion. Against so I just like this family. I don't even know what to think about them. Yea, a light that is endless, that can never be darkened. They get on their knees to pray. I was just like, what the hell? Like, this is something that you see in like, a movie, like a religious movie or something. Like, this isn't real. Be protected today as we go throughout our daily duty. I really don't know what the point of praying is. If God has an ultimate plan, it's kind of stubborn to ask him to change that for you. All of you remember Dorothy Goff in our ward? She had surgery this week. And so we're going to fix a meal today, and we're going to take part of it to her. We need to have you come in the kitchen and just kind of help me out, because there's going to be a lot for me to do. One of the most important things in our family is serving others. We hope that Mark and Eric would both say, here's an older woman who needs some help. That won't be so bad. I don't really give a f to make a meal for somebody else. Would you mind washing dishes while we go here so that we don't have to leave a messy kitchen? How do you do that? <laughs> have you never washed dishes? We have a dishwasher. I knew we were up against <laughs> an attitude of entitlement. She's never had to do without. She's never had to sacrifice for anyone else. If you would open that, there's a can opener in that top drawer. Whoa, whoa. I had to use a can opener. I really didn't know how to use it. <laughs> I've never used a can opener. Honestly. Really? No. Seriously? We got a real quick sense that um, these kids have never been in a kitchen. Ready to put your next one in? I was kind of pissed off that me and Ariel were doing more of the cooking than their kids were when they were supposed to be, you know, the perfect kids. Uh oh. <laughs> I was very much appalled that these two had never prepared a meal for themselves. And as soon as they're done, we'll let you taste them and see if you like them. I didn't feel good making rolls. Like, that's why you go to the store and buy rolls already pre-made. Hi, right, Ariel. You are the roll person. So you can take the rolls. OK, Mark, you take your Jello and the green beans. Do you mind getting my door back here? I was hoping that they would understand that they were serving someone, not thinking about themselves, but thinking about someone else. I just don't understand why the calls do so much for other people when they can't, like, do, like, luxury things, like, for themselves. Hi. How's Dorothy? Well, I think that the call family, you know, feels better than everybody else because they do these things that a normal person wouldn't do. Good to see you guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. I don't know that I would say that it impacted them, but they did it, and that was good.
Mark had asked permission to go back just to walk around the property, clear his head a bit. Being trapped in this tiny space for over 24 hours really got to me. When I realized that Mark had not gone to the back of the property, I did talk to Russell. I said, he's not where I thought he would be. Let's go check on him and see how he's doing. I think I'm going to go drive around by the bowling alley I think and you see should. if I can see if he's OK. Make sure he's all right. It's real quiet about everything, but yeah, there's something brewing inside. Mark does not have a great, strong character at this point. People like that will keep to themselves for a while, and then they'll do something really big for shock value. That's a craving for attention. I need to get away from those people because they're all about my nuts. I just want to go climb. As Mark went over the crest of the hill, and I did get concerned. It's kind of dangerous country. You can fall off ledges and cliffs. I'm not used to the way they live, and I was kind of overwhelmed, and it's kind of a culture shock for me. I've never really been used to working in my life. Hey, Mark. Want to ride? Hop in. It was very important to have the talk with Mark after I picked him up from his little climbing over the mountain stunt. I did want him to know the parameters again. Really taking off like that in this area is fairly dangerous. I don't know. I just thought, you know, I need to collect my thoughts after working. So if you take off like that one more time without asking, we'll have some consequences. I hate getting into conversations with them because it keeps dragging on, and I don't really care to listen to what they have to say. Coming up. You know how to vacuum, right? Work for the teens. I don't clean toilets. And defiance for the calls. How you doing, Ariel? I want my mom to come get me now. You guys ready to get up? Come on, let's go. Hey, Ariel. Time to get up. I don't think I've ever gotten up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if she's getting up. No, I am getting up. All right, I got to get Mark. So we woke them up at 4 o'clock in the morning. They did get up. I was very pleased about that. Out into the fresh air. Let's go. I can't understand how the kids are, like, OK with waking up every morning at 4 o'clock and going to clean offices. I really appreciate you guys helping us do this. You know that my wife stays at home, right? She doesn't work. This is one of the reasons why she's able to do that. Why doesn't your wife come help you clean? Because she's doing the breakfast and stuff for us. So when we get back, we'll have time to be able to eat breakfast, and kids take off and go to school. How many fathers in the world get to actually work with their children in something that is necessary to keep the family going? You know how to vacuum, right? Yeah. Awesome. I think we're going to have Ariel clean off the tops of the desks and the counters. At my house, I don't work. My mom works and provides for me because I'm the child. She's the mother. That's her job. I don't understand how people can make their kids do this. I think that's so mean. It's just like my dad said, we wouldn't be able to live if we didn't have these jobs. There's nothing on the floor. I'm just going to let it run, and, you know? They won't know the difference. How you doing, Mark? I was very disappointed with Mark. He relaxed a lot, sat down a lot, did not work much, and so there would be a consequence later. After you guys get done doing this job, we have some toilets to scrub. I'm not cleaning toilets. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you how. It's pretty easy. No, I don't clean toilets. I've never cleaned a toilet. I think that's disgusting. I want to talk to you a second, Ariel. When I get older, I'll hire a maid. I'm not cleaning toilets. If you aren't able to do it, Ariel, then there's going to be consequences. Ariel did not want to have anything to do with that toilet. <laughs> Mark, you can go ahead and keep vacuuming. Will do. It was like pulling teeth from a princess. It's nasty. Well, it's not. It's clean. No, not happening. Mm -mm. Cleaning a toilet for my own family and cleaning a toilet for some random ass people that I don't know, that's totally different. I would rather have latex covered hands touching a clean paper towel than put my rear on something that's dirty. I just wanted him to leave me the f alone. Just swirling around a little bit. Ew, up here? That's f that's nasty. What'd you say? Sorry, but that is nasty. 
Did you use the foul word? I didn't mean to. That is nasty. We don't use the F word in our family. So when we get home, there's going to be consequences. I don't understand why Mr. Colley flipped his about me cussing, because that is sick. Let's go. After we came home from the offices, I called up Mark and Ariel and said, while everyone else is going to be enjoying a hot breakfast, we're going to go outside and enjoy the cold. OK, you guys know why you're doing this? It was freezing cold. It was dark outside. And it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and I hadn't eaten. And my nose was running. OK, this isn't working. You need to hold it. This isn't normal. As Ariel was cutting the wood, she had a very poor attitude. How you doing, Ariel? I want my mom to come get me now. Better than cleaning the toilet, isn't it? No. <laughs> Look at Mark. He's nearly done. When we gave Mark his punishment, he did the job. No complaints. He didn't stop. He did want to get back indoors and have breakfast. As I was cutting wood, I thought maybe it'd be better for me to just suck it up and get it over with. I give up. OK, this isn't working. Yeah, I'm going to have a bad attitude, and I'm going to make it a big deal. I was pissed. As soon as you're done through this, we can go in and have nice, hot homemade biscuits and butter. You're not going to be hot by the time we go inside. No girl has to do that. Make me clean another toilet. Don't make me go saw wood with your boys. I'm a girl. Girls don't do that. Great, now my hands are dirty. Let me see your hands. You don't have any calluses, young lady. Yeah, I shouldn't. Before I told them they could all go back in and they were finished, Ariel was already on her way walking back into the house. Hey, Ariel. Why don't you put your coat back on a second? I need you to come out here again. You got to do one more thing. And you really had a bad attitude. You know, you weren't smiling about it. You weren't happy about it. And you're saying, why would I, I be happy? Because you're getting done. I don't enjoy this either. My ears are cold. OK, you're not my parent. Well, for this week, I'm your parent. Ariel is in dire need of a change. She needs a very strong emotional reaction in herself to be able to realize who she has become and some of the problems that she has. I just want you to cut through it, not gripe and complain, and think okay. about not saying bad words. This isn't reality. Real people, they cuss, and it's not that big of a deal. You're a very intelligent young lady. I okay? know. You're very smart. I think you can go far in life, but you have to have a good attitude. OK. You have to be happy about it. OK. I tell you what, if you want to stay out here longer, we can. No. Can we go inside now? I realized it was probably going to take a little more time for Ariel to you know, see the picture. Hi, Gay's coming. You're doing good. I was just telling about all the jobs you work. I don't think that's fair. You know Why? Because really kinda... you don't work. Don't ever say that again. Miss Call's a nice lady, but she thinks her job is so hard. In reality, it's not. Don't do that again. Coming up. This is my schedule. Can mom teach Ariel a lesson? You're going to do everything that I do. And is Mark ready to hear from home? It is frustrating to come home after a long day of work and see you laying on the couch. <laughs> Come on. Hey, Mark, buddy. Yeah. You ready to go? When Mr. Call woke me up, I was a little exhausted and didn't really care to do it. Um, Russell, um, I need Ariel to stay here with me today, OK? It's all right? You need her to stay? Yeah, I do. OK. Let's go, guys. Do you remember the other day when you said something to me and I took offense to it? Yeah. I said that you don't work. Uh-huh. Today, you're going to be the stay-at-home mom, OK? You're going to do everything that I do. And this is my schedule, starting with breakfast recipe, the lunch recipes, and the dinner recipes. And then it goes on back here, and then to 10 o'clock, to 10.30 tonight. Good luck. And Miss Call told me that I was going to be the house mom for the day. Like, I would rather be cooking breakfast and be cleaning an office. Who the f is? Ugh. Uh, I think when I presented that schedule to Ariel, I think her thought was, this isn't hard. I can do this. I've never made pancakes from scratch before. Is that your pancake? 
Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was eggs. The message was to see just exactly what goes into taking care of a family and taking care of and taking care of Ariel. What does her mom do every day? So I made you guys pancakes. When the kids got home from cleaning the office, I was like, are they going to like my pancakes? These are really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They were like thanking me and stuff. Here's those shirts. There's usually at least two or three to four batches of laundry every day. If it doesn't get done every day, it's chaos. I don't know, clothes are dirty. I don't live in this house. Oh. If I had to do Miss Call's routine every single day, I probably wouldn't be too happy or nice for that matter. After the kids left, I still had a lot to do. I had to cook lunch and cook dinner and continue doing laundry all day. I could go out and make tons of money, but to me it's more important that I'm here with my kids to make sure they are growing up right, that they're accepting responsibility and being good people. Do you understand that? Yes. So do you get why that really offended me when you said that the other day? Yeah. Do you understand? As Ariel and I kind of talked in the kitchen there, her eyes were looking at me. Um, she was listening. I think she got the message. And it's a lot harder because, like, my mom doesn't have my dad to, like, help. Exactly. I do feel bad that I've, like, not helped my mom so much in the past, which I'm going to try to do when I get home. Good job. Do these go in here, too? Nice job. Hey, Mark, that's enough. Have a seat. I gotta All talk right. to you. You know, Mark, when we first got here, I uh, told you it'd be better for you if you had the experience cutting ties from what you had before. Right now, it's important that you go back to what's really important. Got a letter here from your parents. Thank you. Do you want me to stay here? Uh, I don't care. You can if you want. I hoped above hope that he would allow me to stay as he read the letter, it made me feel good that he was going to share his family with me. Dear Mark, we hope the days you have spent with this family have opened your eyes as to the importance of family, hard work, education, and respect of others. We don't ask much of you. Perhaps a greater appreciation of what you do have and what you can do if you apply yourself. We all need to do our part to help around the house. It is frustrating to come home after a long day of work and seeing you laying on the couch when there are things to be done. We love you very much and want nothing but the best for you. We all miss you and look forward to your return home to hear from your experiences. See you soon. Love, Mom and Dad. It really felt reassuring knowing my parents were thinking about me while I was gone. It meant a lot to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this part here. You may think that when we're constantly on you or punishing you that we don't love you, but nothing can be further from the truth. At that point, I knew for a fact that Mark really did have a good family. All he had to do was accept the teachings his parents had already given him. He might have done some things in the past that weren't right, but let it be in the past. Just forget about it. You got a good heart. Thanks for being my bud. It's no problem. <laughs> Coming up. When you first got here, it seemed like you had a little bit of an attitude. Russ challenges Mark. Did you ever disrespect your parents? Sometimes, yeah. What you gonna do about it? And words from home hit hard. It seems like you don't care much anymore, not about yourself, not about others. Hey, sweetheart. We'll be back in a while. All right, you guys be good. Have fun. Well, I decided that Mark and I needed some guy time. We needed some time alone. Isn't this awesome? It's breathtaking. I could tell that at this point he was ready to talk and to listen. You look around something like this and how big it is, it kind of makes you feel kind of puny, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's amazing. So Mark, when you first got here, it seemed like you had a little bit of an attitude. The main thing I was worried about at first was that you respected my wife. I always told my boys that the way that they treat their mother and their sisters 
is the way that they're going to treat their spouse. You got a little sister, right? Mm-hmm. Do you ever use foul language in front of her? Yeah. Do you think she looks up to you? Not all the time, no. You need to try really hard to develop a real good personal relationship with your sister because someday she might get used to that. She might expect that and someday pick the wrong guy. Who wouldn't want that? No. What are you going to do different with her, do you think? You'd probably be nicer to her. Are you? Mm -hmm. I hope you are. Being up there with Mr. Call made me realize that family was the most important thing and I shouldn't put anything above that. I love my kids. I love my family, and I want you to have the same thing. I know you love your family. You love your mom and dad. You love what they do for you. Yeah. Do you ever disrespect your parents? Sometimes, yeah. You think it hurts their feelings? What you gonna do about it? Try to fix that, you know, show them more respect and be kinder to them. I've been kind of neglecting my family in the past few years, and I need to make up for that because I'm not gonna have much time with them as I grow up, so I should make these years count. I want you to remember what we've had here and what you've seen. Living the way I have for the last few days, I don't think it's gonna be possible to forget this experience. Really? Yeah. It nearly put tears in my eyes. Mark is realizing that it's not all about him. That's one of the most important things that a teenager can do. You're an awesome young man. You're just like one of my kids now. I am proud of my kids. I'll take my kids anywhere, put them up against anybody, and you'd be part of that. <laughs> that made me kind of feel good on the inside because it showed that he cared about me and I don't have to be the way I was in the past. You're a smart guy. You can do a lot. I'm proud of you. What's the next thing in this recipe? Chopped onion. Okay. I felt that Ariel was opening up. She was she was sharing more things. And so yeah, this was a good time to get the letter from her mom. And guess what? What? <laughs> we need to come down here, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> the letter from your mom. You can read it by yourself, or I can stay here and we can read it together. Whatever you want to do. You can just sit here with me. Okay. I will. I'll sit next to you. That sounds good. It made me feel good that she was comfortable having me stay. I let Miss Call stay because I wanted her to get to know, like, me and my mom's relationship. Ariel, the last few years for us has been a very trying time in our relationship, but I want you to know, no matter what, I've never stopped loving you and never will. I do worry for you, though, it seems like you don't care much anymore, not about school, not about yourself, not about others. It makes me sad when you cousins swear at me and also when I hear you treating your friends the same way. It's okay to be angry, hurt, and disappointed, but it's not okay for you to handle your emotions by screaming, being rude, or walking away from another person forever. When you come home, I hope you will study more and be more responsible for yourself by getting a job that will allow you to understand the value of money. Please change your choices now so that we can have one more year together enjoying each other's company before you leave for college. I want nothing but the best for you. You are and always will be my precious angel. I love you, Mom. My mom's never written me a letter like that before. I think that she's right. I probably should get a job and like help her because I've always had just stuff handed to me. And I do realize, like, I find myself apologizing a lot because I am so mean to so many people, and I should probably learn how to control that. You know, there's something about moms. They put up with more junk from their kids than anybody else, and you know why. It's because she loves you, and she would give her life for you. My mom calls me a precious angel. She always has. So when I get home, I'm going to try to actually be her precious angel and be nice to her and show her that I can do good things. You're so cute. No, <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> Coming up, the teen's parents arrive. Hey, buddy. But are they ready for what's in store? The greatest gift you could give her is time. She needs you desperately. Hello. Hey, Ariel. Your 
Your mom's on the way. She'll be here in 20 minutes. Yeah. You need to go upstairs and get your stuff together. Yeah. Seeing Ariel as excited as she was about her mother coming gave me joy, happiness. I was very happy knowing that my mom's so close because being here with the calls made me realize how good I have it at home. Hey, Mark. Sad day for us, happy day for you. Your mom's gonna be here in about 20 minutes. Really? You okay. need to get your stuff together? All right. All right. I think, you know, coming in this weekend, I was, you know, being arrogant, just overall being stubborn. And, you know, after, you know, going through this experience, it makes me feel like I can have a chance to better myself. I hope Ariel gains some appreciation for what she has and hopefully will come back understanding how well she has it at home. Hello! Oh, did you... I don't want to cry. Don't make me cry. Uh, I actually hugged my mom when I saw her, and we don't do hugs. I missed you. I was thrilled to see Ariel just overwhelmed and didn't realize how much I missed her. Tell us about what happened. We wake up at 4.30 every morning and go clean the offices before the kids go to school. But then I got in trouble for saying the F word. So before we could eat breakfast, we had to come home and saw wood. But she did it. Wow. She did it. Ariel needs time with you. That's the greatest gift you could give her is time. Ariel is a very, very capable girl. Oh, yeah, I agree. She could use some experience earning some of the things that she gets. Ariel, why did we have you be a mom for a day? I didn't think it was fair because he works three jobs and she doesn't work. So she made me be the mom for a day and it was hard. Well, I hope you did learn something from that then. You know, it's hard for me. It is hard for me. It's hard for me to be a disciplinarian and try to be a parent. Well, since you give me so much, I should probably like give back something. Like I should do more stuff for you and like be nice at least. I just wanted more than anything for her to have you be the good Ariel I saw the last day. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I am really excited about the changes already that I see in Ariel, and I just really am hopeful that she will take that back with us. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> when I get home, I'll be a lot more grateful of the things that I have, and I definitely will be nicer to my mom. Bye. <laughs> We're losing a sister and a daughter. It was difficult. Bye-bye, bye, you guys. Bye. We love you, Ariel. I feel like Ariel came away with a sense that, in spite of her actions, she was still loved and she was still valued. That was a major success. I missed you. I missed you. Too. What I did at the beginning of the week was wrong, and Mr. and Mrs. Call, they didn't deserve it one bit. I just wanted to kind of apologize for anything I might have said at the beginning of this week that might have offended you guys. I'm sorry about that. Well, we appreciate that, Mark. You know what? But it was just, you know, it's almost like we can't even remember that. You're an awesome young man. We've had a great time with you. He was very sincere, and it made my wife and I more happy than we can explain. We hope that Mark has gained a greater appreciation of listening to his parents and what they have to say. I'm very excited to see if he missed us and give him a big hug if he'll let me. <laughs> when I first saw my parents pull up, words couldn't describe how happy I was. Hey, buddy. You're not going to believe the things they made me do here. It was good to see him and good to see that uh, he had a smile on his face. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Come on. <laughs> could see in his eyes that something had happened this past few days, and uh, he was happy to see us. One of the things we did when we had the rules was we said there would be consequences if you broke the rules. You made me chop wood. Good. I want you, Mark, to tell them about the first day and what happened. Tell well, what happened. they said we had to sit down to pee, so I might have peed on the toilet seat. What happened? I cleaned the toilet. Yay. And I explained to him that he would be cleaning toilets for five days if this is how he was going to act. There was a respect there. He wasn't shutting me down. Well, I got from the seriousness in your face that you meant what you said. The struggles we have at this age with boys, mm -hmm. they want to be the man. 
Our job is to set parameters and not let them go out of them too far. We got a letter from you guys. Tell me about the importance of that letter to you. Well, it showed how much my mom and dad cared about me. You didn't know that? Well, I did, but I guess I'd never heard it from you guys, because I was always gone. Mark, what are you pledging to do to change the relationship with your mom and your dad? To help them out with things around the house. Would you like to learn how to cut the grass? Yeah. I want to apologize for anything I've done bad in the past. I want to make up for that. His parents are great people, and he wants that bond. He needs that bond. When I first came in here, I just thought I would, you know, go in and come out not being affected at all. But I think now I got a new lease on life. I love you. I love you. <laughs> These last few days had a pretty profound uh, effect upon him. It's gratifying to see him wanting to become more part of his family. Thanks for taking care of our son. Thank you. Yes. Bye. It was very tough to say goodbye to Mark, but Mark's going back to contribute to his family. Bye. Bye. Keep in touch, Do OK? Well. That I've been able to play a small part in impacting the lives of Mark and Ariel it makes me feel as though I've been part of a miracle. I think what I'm going to do when I get home is make up for a lot of lost time, maybe do some chores and hang out with the family.